Welcome back to Pace Law Firm, PaceLawFirm.com, talking with Director of Immigration, Jim Metcalf. You can find him at PaceImmigration.com as well. Uh, Jim, last time we spoke, about program was just about to get going like gangbusters. A couple of weeks later, it's closed. Um, what happened? How did it go? What's your feelings on it? Well, you're talking about the uh, Quebec Immigrant Investor Program, as we call the QIIP. QIIP is one of the most popular uh, passive immigrant investor programs, I think, in the world. And it allows people who make a uh, contribution to uh, the Quebec government uh, uh, to become permanent residents of Canada. Uh, and uh, because of the overwhelming success of it, uh, the Quebec government put a cap on it uh, for this year. And they only allowed uh, 1,750 people to uh, enter into the program. They also only allowed uh, 1,200 from any one country, which means only 1,200 from China and 550 from the rest of the world. Wow. The program was open for two weeks. They received over 7,000 applications and it's now closed. And the Quebec government is slowly going through the applications and eventually it will be a, call it a lottery, call it pick the numbers from a hat, but uh, only 1,750 will be processed. What will happen next year is uh, uncertain. Uh, I suspect that uh, they will probably make an announcement in April and probably uh, reopen it. You've got to understand that Quebec's uh, Immigrant Investor Fund is a five-year rotating fund that uh, people put their, their money in on day one and five years later the money is refunded to them. And to keep the pot full, the investment pot that Quebec, uh, uh, the Quebec government manages, they have to bring in new investors every year to replace the old ones who are having their, uh, their uh, money redeemed to them. So uh, I suspect it will uh, carry on again next year and I think the, the, the current format is a, is a very good one. Open, um, close, open, uh, close. I was going to say, you like this better than the way it was before. Yes, you never knew when it was going to close uh, uh, and now the uh, Quebec government has done a, I think a, a very, very good job of uh, managing the program. They're very efficient, they're very uh, uh, intelligent in the way they assess people. Uh, they do a very, very good job and they're very, very efficient. Now this is as opposed to, I know that we've talked before off camera, but the federal program, where do you see the federal program right now? Uh, exactly where it is now, it's not accepting new applications. They have a, a monster backlog of about 15,000 applications, mostly uh, in Asia. Uh, they're only uh, being able to move a, a, a certain number per year. I've heard uh, stories that they're trying to move uh, 2,500 to 3,000 per year. So they've got a, a four or five year backlog of applications if all of them uh, continue to be in that stream and they don't fall by the wayside. It's not a very well managed program from my point of view. Uh, assessments are done by immigration officers uh, who may not necessarily be uh, as expert as some of the people uh, who are preparing the applications and uh, as expert as Quebec does because Quebec seems to have uh, very highly trained people who can analyze uh, all the financial documents presented to them. Okay, let's move on uh, quickly to the, um, the, something that social media is just a buzz with us every single day is the, the strike around the world of various diplomats and people saying that they can't get their student visas and stuff. Where do you things stand right now? I think it's uh, I, I think it's a bit overplayed because the vast majority of people who are processing uh, visitor visas, uh, student visas, employment visas, permanent resident visas, the whole range of uh, visas for the Canadian government are not foreign service officers. I was a foreign service officer once and uh, in, a, in an office of 20 people there were only two of us who had uh, were foreign service officers. The rest were locally engaged staff, uh, locally engaged who had visa signing authorities, uh, support staff, etc. So I think uh, it probably affects, uh, I think about 160 people uh, around the world, which is not a, a, a huge number, quite frankly. So I think the it's it's uh, there's an awful lot of scare tactics. Uh, uh, it's it's uh, it's one of those situations. It's not a very pleasant one. Uh, but uh, I can understand the uh, uh, 
the concerns of, of my former colleagues who uh, haven't had a, a pay raise in a couple of years. Now, let's just back up a little bit for people that may not have a clue what we're talking about, but I, we read about this stuff every day. What What is the problem? Who has the problem? What's their problem? The problem is that there's a group of foreign service officers who uh, work in three distinct areas, in the political economic field, in the trade commissioner service, and, and the immigration service overseas. And they are classified as foreign service officers, or FSs. And they are rotational people who move from Canada to abroad, to another post, back, and uh, they have not had a uh, contract with the Treasury Board of Canada. I believe it's in, uh, in two years, and the, uh, the union, which is PAFSO, the Professional Association of Foreign Service Officers, has been trying to negotiate a new contract. Uh, the union has a right to withdra uh, withdraw the services of their employees, and they've been having rotating strikes, or uh, usually among, amongst the, the big visa post, excuse me, the big visa processing offices, uh, and it has had, uh, uh, and it comes, at, it com also comes at the time of year when people are moving. In any event, uh, the mm -hmm. traditional time for foreign service officers to move in and out of a post is in August of the year, uh, and also it's the it's the big uh, tourist season for. Uh, non-visa exempt countries, and for students coming into Canada to, to study for the first time. They'll, they'll obviously have to apply for study permits and uh, visas if they're not from a visa exempt country. So it's like the perfect storm is if you're going to have a strike, have it during the summertime. Yeah. Uh, and obviously it, it, uh, it, it could be a little bit off-putting for some tourists. Uh, it, and, and for students. But on the other hand, the uh, Government of Canada has been opening up uh, uh, visa application centers. And so that individuals who require visas uh, to come to Canada don't apply at the Canadian consulate or the Canadian embassy anymore. They apply uh, with their paperwork at a visa application center who does the first cut and, and make sure the applications are, are uh, all complete and electronically forwards it to the embassy for approval and the issuance of the visa. Uh, it's as simple as, it's a very, very good move. It takes the drudgery out of the, out of the visa offices and takes the lineups out of the visa offices and the embassies around the world. And this is a new, uh, it, it's, it's, I, I believe it's been fairly successful. The people I've talked to have applied at va VAX have no problems with it. So people could do that right now rather than just waiting for this strike to be over? Sure, I, I, would, I wouldn't say don't, don't uh, uh, make your application. Yeah. That's the only thing you can do. It, it's it, get in the lineup. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Jim Metcalf, thanks for coming by. I'm sure we'll talk to you again soon on some more updates. Unless you got anything pressing you want to bring up. Uh, nothing really. I, I think yeah. it's, uh, uh, as I was explaining earlier, the, this year has been all about changes in the immigration program, mm. and I think there are going to be more coming. Uh, there's a new minister, uh, but I think uh, the former minister, Jason Kenney, has, has made all the changes, uh, the major changes that are necessary. There's probably some fine-tuning uh, required in some of the immigration programs. The other problem I think we've had, and, and if, or, or if, if you can call it a problem, is that uh, much more of the processing is being centralized in Canada. Communication is electronic only. Uh, you can't speak to immigration officers. Immigration officers don't speak to clients. Everything is on paper now. And if the paper isn't perfect, you have a problem. And that's where you guys come in. Hopefully. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it's a learning curve for us as well. And, and we learn something new every day, quite okay. frankly. Great. Uh, we'll talk to you again soon with all these changes. I'm sure we'll have more to talk about. Definitely. And, uh, until then, uh, the bottom of the screen is where you can get a hold of Jim Metcalf. You'll see his phone number and his email down there. And we'll see you next time at PaceLawFirm.com. Bye-bye. Thank you.